Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's webinar on Connected Lighting, Present and Future. Thanks for joining us today. I'm Ann Cosgrove, the Editor-in-Chief of Facility Executive Magazine, and this webinar today is presented by Signify. Signify is a world leader in lighting for professionals, consumers, and lighting for the Internet of Things, and the company offers energy-efficient lighting products, systems, and services that enable their customers to enjoy a superior quality of light and make people's lives safer and more comfortable, businesses more productive, and cities more livable. So before we get started with the presentation, I'd like to cover a few housekeeping items. Please note the control panel on your screen. This is where you can submit questions in the question box in that panel. You can send those in at any time, and they will be addressed. Uh, during and after the presentation. Also, please note the orange arrow on the left side of that panel. Clicking on that will either expand or collapse the panel, so please be sure it is expanded and you can access the question box. If at any time you experience a technical difficulty, you can also send a message to us in that question section and someone on our team will answer you privately. Also, if you're interested in continuing education credits, you'll receive a certificate of attendance and an email from facility executive after this webinar. You can report that to your association for the CEUs. Now we can move along and I'd like to introduce your speaker, Robert Lee. Robert leads the product marketing, strategic planning, and partnership development for Signify's connected LED electronics portfolio for the commercial and industrial market segment in North America. He brings over 20 years of experience in telecommunications technologies, IoT, and data analytics. Robert received his MBA degree from the Northwestern University, a master degree from Cornell University, and a bachelor degree from the Georgia Institute of Technology. So we're looking forward to hearing Robert's insights on connecting lighting and hearing your questions as well. And uh, with that, we'll move forward. Welcome, Robert. Thank you, Anne, for the introduction. And I hope that everybody can hear me loud and clear. Uh, it is my pleasure to be here today to talk to all of you about a topic that is probably of high interest to many of you. And I'm very excited, excited about this opportunity and we have a lot to cover today, so let's get started. Moving on to the next. For this webinar, I mainly want to cover the following four topics. First, I would like to discuss how the pandemic will have a lasting impact, not just on all of us, but the lighting industry as well. Specifically, I will make the argument that this disruption might make more people realize the extraordinary potential that connected lighting can bring beyond illumination. There are so many more exciting new use cases today. Uh, I will go over some of those most common ones. Then I will wrap up my presentation with examples of how the connected lighting products and solutions from Signify are being used today. I have several examples that should help you to better understand how they fit together. Now, as you can see, it is without question that COVID-19 pandemic has caused huge disruption to the world and every one of us. What you see in these pictures are the city of Los Angeles, Chicago, which is where I live and work, and New York City a week ago. I took these images from the website called earthcam.com, and it was surreal to see how empty these big cities were back then and still are today. The fact that I'm doing this webinar from home and most of you are probably listening from home as well, is in another example of how we are relying more and more on modern technologies to cope with these disruption and this pandemic. If you look back at the history of mankind, you will probably recognize that the human race has been in this situation before and we will survive the last pandemic that took more lives than today. So I'm hopeful and optimistic that we will come out of this stronger than ever. The question that I have and many of us have is what will be the new norm once this pandemic is over? Already public and private sectors are fine tuning their people, production, and logistic processes in real time in order to respond to the COVID-19 pandemic. These actions are undoubtedly helping them to build even more flexibility in their operations and supply chains. This is where I think connected lighting will play an even bigger role going forward. So what is connected lighting? If the words such as data, digitization, 
communication and actionable intelligence come to mind, you are on the right path. The company that I work for, Signify, has a very nice short video about connected lighting that I encourage all of you to check out. Because of the time constraint and the amount of information I have yet to cover, I will not show this video to you during this webinar, but I want to leave you with these important words from Alan, who is the narrator of this video. And he said, connected lighting will deliver extraordinary value beyond illumination in exciting ways we have yet to imagine. So let's take a pause and let those words sink in for a moment. As you will hear later in my webinar, there is so much potential for connected lighting and we are just scratching the surface. And when it comes to connected lighting, I think many of you associate energy saving as the main benefit, and you're quite right about that. To back this up, I want to mention a groundbreaking and comprehensive field study by Design Lights Consortium in 2017. Design Lights Consortium, or DLC, is a nonprofit organization whose mission is to drive efficient lighting and they found out that the incremental saving from network lighting control system were 47% across multiple building types and systems. And if you look closely at the chart shown, in which the data were collected from five lighting control manufacturers, seven building types, and 114 buildings, the energy saving attributed to the use of network lighting control can be as high as 82% for the warehouses and 63% for the offices, for example. So this certainly makes a lot of sense because these facilities typically stay lit for a long period of time. But the fact is the time has changed. Nowadays, when people talk about connected lighting, they think about what other benefits connected lighting can bring to the table. In the hyper-connected world that we live in, the data that we, call, we can collect from a connected lighting system is the key. And this, in fact, is supported by the graph that you see on the right. IDC or International Data Corporation released this graph for its Futurescape event last year. And as you can see, the number one thing on, in the minds of the CEOs around the world is connectivity. So by incorporating connectivity to any lighting system, you get valuable and actionable data that will pay more dividends for years to come. And speaking of the smart building, HID Global, which offers product and services to secure digital and physical assets. As a matter of fact, you probably carry one when you go into the office because you have to get access to the building. Published a white paper titled Technology Trends in Commercial Real Estate, focused on location services. So this is a chart I took from that report. And I think it's quite fascinating to see that of the six key trends that are shaping the smart building industry, Many are already being used for connected lighting. For example, the proliferation of LED drivers with building memory to aid remote diagnostics. The use of motion sensor at each fixture to provide real-time location information. Or the extraction of operational and asset data from lighting fixtures for maintenance and diagnostic purposes fall in the IoT category. And the use of cloud for things like machine learning will certainly be on the rise because of the amount of data that's being collected today and tomorrow. So these are good examples of what connected lighting can do for a smart building. And in terms of the key driving forces for the commercial adoption of connected lighting, the general consensus is that there are six leading candidates. And the most obvious ones are the regulatory requirements such as ASHRAE, LEED, Title 24, and the well building standards. And there are also new and emerging standards about connected lighting, which I'll get into in just a minute. The rest, such as technology, sustainability, health and well being, and safety and security, play a key part in making connected lighting more mainstream for commercial and industrial applications. And by having a connected lighting system, you can do a lot more in terms of how to better manage any facility from better energy savings to better utilization of the building spaces. 
And that is all because of the availability of actionable data. So now that I have identified the leading candidate that drive the commercial adoption of connected lighting, I would like to hear from you and see which one do you think is most important. And could you please bring out the first pool question of this webinar, please? Yes, thanks. Thank you, Robert. So as you can see on your screen, uh, we have a question for you, and that is which of the following do you think will have the most impact on the adoption of connected lighting? So please select one. And as you can see, there are the choices, regulatory requirements and industry standards, technologies, sustainability, such as energy savings, health and well-being, or safety and security. So please take a moment to cast your vote on your thoughts, and then we'll show the results in a few moments. Thank you. So certainly okay. all of these are leading ahead, indicators. So I will look to look forward to hear the results. So and, and there they are. There they are, Robert. Thank you. And thank you everyone for voting. Uh, so yeah, sustainability, as you can see there, uh, 43 percent of our audience uh, saying that would, they think that'll have the most impact on the adoption of connected lighting that we're talking about here. Uh, about a quarter, a little more than a quarter, regulatory requirements and industry standards, followed by technologies, safety and security, and rounded out by 5% health and well-being. So there you go. Thank you very much. Thanks, Robert. Back to you. All right. Thank you, Anne. So let's move on. Last month, uh, Christina Halfpenny, who is the executive director and CEO of Design Lights Consortium, wrote an excellent article about the network lighting control for the facility executive magazine. I think her article is very informative and fitting for this webinar. So I'd like to highlight three key things that I learned from her article. First, she mentioned a prediction that was made by the US Department of Energy and according to the DOE, more than a third of installed luminaires in commercial buildings will have network connectivity by 2035. And I don't know where we are today in, exactly in terms of numbers, but I will argue that after this pandemic, there will certainly be more awareness about connected lighting because of the reason we have already talked about. And second, she mentioned the DLC's 2017 energy saving field study that I have already talked about earlier in this webinar. And as you recall, the average energy saving was 47% according to this report, but it can be much higher, depends on the specific building types and locations. And third, she mentioned how DLC has a multi-year plan to enhance the interoperability of lighting controls. I think this is very important because for connect the lighting to become mainstream for commercial and industrial applications, they certainly need to have some level of interoperability. And this interoperability can be at the system level. And as you will hear later in my webinar, this interoperability is perhaps more important at the electronic device level. So from the technology standards point of view, three important entities are shaping the future of connected lighting in the North American market. The first is ANSI, which stands for American National Standard Institute. And they have introduced a new set of standards or C137.5, which specifically covers energy reporting, diagnostics and asset management for the LED drivers. The second is Digital Illumination Interface Alliance, or commonly known as DIIA. So this is a global lighting industry alliance that has also adopted a similar set of global requirements for energy reporting, diagnostics, and asset management for the LED drivers. So those LED drivers that meet the DIIA requirements will be considered D4I certified and will be marked as such on the product label. And last but not least, the DLC has introduced a new set of requirements for interior and exterior network lighting control systems, or NLC for short, which I will talk about in more detail in the next slides. So together, these entities will help standardize the data format and also encourage new use and greater adoption of connector lighting, and which will accelerate adoption of the connector lighting and ultimately provide greater design flexibility to you and the lighting specifier in the design of the connected lighting systems. 
And if you go to the DOC website today and look for the lighting controls, uh, you will see version 4.0 of the network lighting control system technical requirements. And as a matter of fact, the version 5.0 has been published, but it has not been approved. So it's in the stage where is DLC is soliciting feedback and comments. But when you look back at version 4.0, which was published back in 2019, there are several new additions and two are arguably the most important in terms of facilitating the flow of data in any connected lighting system. The first one I can see that's highlighting yellow is about the individual addressability of each luminaire or light fixture. And the second one is about energy monitoring. And both of them are required system capability for interior and exterior network connected lighting systems. And if you think about them for a second, their inclusion makes perfect sense because these two requirements enable us to monitor the energy consumption of each luminaire in a building. Furthermore, when a qualified network lighting control system that meets version 4.0 requirements is chosen for a lighting project, whether that is new install or retrofit, there will be additional utility rebates to help to offset the initial system costs. So at this point, you might be wondering how much utility rebates are available today? So I have the next slide to help to answer that question. So with this chart, you can see that it came from Guidehouse Insights, which is actually acquired a company called Navigan Research back in 2019. And what the data shown here is from 2018, and this might be a little bit dated for some, Directionally speaking, the five key takeaways that I listed are still valid. First, the utility rebates are used as financial incentives to drive more adoption of LED lighting as well as lighting control systems. While the bulk of the rebates are for LED lighting, also known as the solid state lighting in the lighting industry or SSL, as you can see from the bar chart, the lighting control portion, which is represented by the green color, is part of the mix. And in terms of numbers, the utility rebates for lighting control is expected to reach 20% of the total utility rebates by 2023. And the annualized growth rate of utility rebates specific for lighting control will be seven times that of LED lighting. And then lastly, the Northeast region of the US leads away in terms of the utility rebates available for both LED lighting and controls, followed by the Western region, the Midwest and the South. So certainly there is money available to help to offset the cost of the connected lighting system. And there are plenty of lighting manufacturers that have very useful information on their website that direct you to how to seek out those utility rebates. And besides energy saving utility rebates, the other key aspect of a modern connected lighting system that maybe people find appealing. And I would like to use this specific example. And this is example from CBRE, which went on record with this remark after Richard helped implement this signifies conducting lighting system 2018. And the key thing to remember is flexibility. And he said the following, quote, the possibilities of this connected lighting system are endless. There's so many possible capability of the system that we haven't even explored yet. So I would not be surprised if this is the first impression made by many of you who have implemented a connected lighting system for the first time. And especially in the world that we live in today, where the future is so uncertain because of the pandemic, both the public and the private sector need to be able to cater to a more dynamic workforce and also the work environment. And this is especially true as some of us start to recover from this pandemic and allow to get back to work. And a modern connected lighting system can help, for example, by providing facility manager like you greater control flexibility of where the lights should stay on and for how long in observance of the social distancing best practices at each state.
at this point, I'm going to transition a little bit to talk more about the technology. And I think there's one key technology advancement for connected lighting that I think is super important. And this might be not a big deal for most people outside of the lighting industry, but I think that you have a huge and profound impact because of the need for actionable data that is required by a world that is filled with the Internet of Things. As you can see in this animation, both on the top and bottom, there are two categories of LED drivers. In case you're not familiar with what an LED driver is, it is basically the electronic component that powers a LED fixture. It is essentially what an engine is to a car, where the car is the equivalent of a light fixture. And the first category of LED drivers on the top is considered analog based, and it can only react to the on, off, and dimming commands from the lighting sensor and controller. The second category of LED drivers appear in the market about five years over. And what makes these digital LED drivers different from their analog counterparts is the fact that they support two-way digital communication. And this is important because they can be programmed with valuable information such as asset data, namely the make and model of the luminaires. They can also provide vital information such as real-time voltage, current, and even energy consumption data as well as other essential diagnostic information of the LED fixture. So in an era where we are relying more and more on data to make us make the right decision, the digital LED driver is arguably an essential part of a modern connected lighting system. So at this point, you may wonder, what does a modern connected lighting system look like? Depends on who you ask, you may get multiple answers. And for me, a modern connected lighting system is depicted in this diagram. At the very bottom, it's just like building a Lego set. You have the so-called digital LED driver, which not only powers light fixture, but also has built-in memory to store essential data that I have just talked about. And it is also connected to a lighting sensor and or controller, which can have their own microprocessor that can be quite powerful these days. And together, they can work in harmony with each other. And they are, of course, are integrated into a LED fixture that are managed by a lighting control network. And depending on the level of complexity, this lighting control network may work with other software application and perhaps even access information from the cloud or interact with other cloud-based software and platforms. So in the setup, there are several key characteristics that I have noted here such as rich data set, co-compliance, scalability, flexibility, and perhaps most important of all, ready for future use cases. In this slide, what I want to show is that with a digital LED driver is a foundation for the modern connected lighting systems, in which asset information can be programmed at the factory and other vital stats of the LED drivers, such as voltage, current, and power can be retrieved in real time. And together with data collected by the sensors, such as motion of the building occupants and detection of daylight that is present in the area, we now have a wealth of useful information for all of the LED factors in a connected lighting system. The importance of these data will be more important and evident as you go through some of the most common use cases in the following set of slides. So in this illustration with the use case number A, there are four specific examples of how a connected lighting system can help improve facility management. For example, in the early hours, a facility manager can either keep the LED light fixtures off or set the light output very low to conserve energy. If the light goes out for whatever reason, wayfinding feature identify the point of failure. And throughout the day, occupancy data captured by the light sensors provide useful insight into how to best optimize the utilization of the building space. And when it comes to a post-COVID-19 work environment, a facility manager may perhaps even want to use the occupancy data to advise the cleaning crew which area needs extra attention during the non-business hour because the increase in traffic. 
Now for connected lighting, the benefits are not just limited to the facility managers only. The building occupants can reap and enjoy other benefits as well. So for example, many connected lighting systems available today offer location-based services and other wayfinding features. And by integrating with other productivity tools for things such as room reservation, for example, an office worker can make impromptu meetings with other colleagues, especially for those offices with what's called an open desk or hoteling arrangement where everybody does not have assigned desk. And when the occupants leave early at the end of the day, and if the building for whatever reason becomes vacant earlier than expected, the connect the lighting system can automatically then the lights up or turn the lights down or turn it off altogether to further reduce energy consumption. And one of the key use cases that you may be hearing a lot lately is circadian lighting. And what the circadian lighting is all about for the initiated is the recognition that each of us has a 24 hour internal clock that regulates our sleep and wake cycle the body temperature, and even hormone production. And all of them are important for our health and strong cognitive functioning. And by using a connected lighting system to manipulate the artificial light in a way that matches our body's circadian rhythm, we could potentially improve the well-being of the building occupants in many ways. So if you put all of that aside for a moment, each of us are affected by what we see. And visual impacts produced by lighting systems that can change intensity as well as color temperature are immediate and very noticeable. And currently there are three different approaches to implementing a circadian lighting systems. First, you can change the light intensity of course. And second, you can also vary the color temperature from cool to warm as you see in these three pictures. And three, the blue light wavelength that you hear so much about, which can increase our alertness during the day, but can also interfere with our circadian rhythm in the evening, is another parameter that can be adjusted. Because the circadian lighting is gaining such uh, attention and, uh, and also importance, uh, the Well Building Standard has published feature 54 specifically for the circadian lighting design. And in terms of commercial deployments, we are seeing more about them in the news. So for example, Delos, which is a real estate and a technology firm that developed the well building standards, adopted a connected lighting system that can change the color temperature depending on the time of day for the office space in New York City. They even released an interesting YouTube video to celebrate this project and I encourage you to look it up after the webinar. And just last month, IES had a great webinar about tunable lighting systems, uh, how they are being used at the Boulder Community Health in Colorado and the intensive care unit of the University of Kentucky. This is another great webinar if you have not seen it lately. Finally, I had the pleasure of visiting a teacher in San Diego who has a prototype wireless human-centric connected lighting system from Signify that was set up in her classroom last year. And with this prototype system from Signify, she was able to use a wireless switch with a built-in sensor for each light fixture to easily change the intensity and color temperature of the LED fixtures in her classroom. And the picture you see on the right is actually her classroom in San Diego. And this wireless human-centric lighting system has greatly enhanced the feeling of a classroom as well as improved the learning experience of her students. One thing that she has said to me that has left such a strong impression and I want to share with all of you at this webinar, she's told me that after this connected lighting is installed, uh, it went, her classroom went through such a huge transformation that it's no longer considered a dungeon in her own words. At that moment, I thought to myself, that, wow, this is an incredible customer testimonial I got to share with all of you. So, Carius, if you're listening to this webinar, I just want to thank you for sharing this powerful personal story with me. And before we move on, I have hit the halfway point of my webinar, and I'd like to pause maybe to take a couple questions that have come out during this webinar. So, Anne, if you can give me a couple of them, please. Yes, that's great. Thank you, Robert. And thank you all for, for sending in the questions. Uh, we will hit on a few right now, as Robert mentioned. 
Uh, so Robert, I will pose this one to you first. Um, the question is, in my experience, configuring lighting controls can be difficult and time consuming. What should I look for with my next lighting project to make this configuration process simpler in my facilities? Uh, thank you, and thank you for whoever asked that question. It's a great one, and I think this is something we are hearing a lot. Um, the fact of the matter is actually this is a topic that was looked at by the Pacific Northwest National Laboratory, or PNNL. They did a study back in 2017, which was funded also by the U.S. Department of Energy. And for that study, multiple commercial solutions, I think the numbers was between five to 10, were evaluated at the Parsons School of Design in New York City. And this place, in case you don't know, is actually where the popular TV show called Project Runway was first filmed. And if you recall, this show was about aspiring fashion designer and it was hosted by the supermodel Heidi Klum. But anyway, that PNLO found from this field study was that all of the connected lighting system were not as simple as the manufacturer claimed. There is room for improvement for pretty much each and every one of them. For something as rudimentary as documentation to installer and integrator training, as well as training of the end user and facility managers. And each of the participant vendors got feedback from the PNNL afterwards. And since Signify was also participant of this field study, the product team and I got the result and feedback and started figuring out how to make our connected lighting solution available from Signify more user-friendly. And from the facility manager, installer, and even the system screener uh, integrated point of view, I think that things has improved quite a bit since then. Uh, but ultimately, I will suggest the following. Because technology has evolved so rapidly, uh, doing research to better educate yourself and to really have a lots of hands-on training should really help you make your next lighting project easier. I hope that answered that question. Thank you. Thanks, Robert. Uh, so we'll, we'll take another one. Um, how do I upgrade existing uh, non-LED lighting in my building to LED lighting in a connected system? So I, I suppose we're talking about a facility that hasn't done the LED lighting switch over yet. Um, so how does, uh, can you please describe what that transition might look like uh, over to a connected system. Certainly, and this is another great question. I'm very glad someone asked about this. Uh, the fact is that there are actually many good LED lighting retrofit systems or solutions available today that can be connected to the building management system or just be connected in general. And one of the popular choices is from Signify. It is called Philip Evo Kit, which I'll cover a little bit later in this webinar. Uh, in the interest of time, let me uh, move forward and um, we can take more questions later on toward the end of the webinar. So for those of you who have not heard of Signify, you most certainly have heard of Philips or perhaps purchased Philip light bulbs and Philip Hue smart LED from your Home Depot near you. So these products are made by Signify, which is the lighting division that was spun off from Royal Philip the Dutch multinational conglomerate back in 2016. Today, Signify is truly a market leader in the lighting industry in more ways than just one. It is an industry titan that offers everything about lighting. So for example, from light sources such as the LED in conventional lamps, LED electronic ballasts, LED drivers, and light sensors and controllers to lighting manufacturers coast to coast. Signify also had luminaire brands such as Lidolite, Lidolite, and the Evoke that I just mentioned, just to name a few. And Signify also offers lighting control solutions that covers a lot of the application for both the commercial application and they also have many system services that help you to make the connect lighting deployment easier and simpler. So, Signify is truly a market leader in all of these areas that I've just talked about. So under Signify, there are several more trusted brands that many of you probably have heard of. For the commercial industrial application in North America, these four key brands are the following. 
first, for those of you who have been around the lighting industry for some time, Advan is very well known in terms of quality and reliability for lighting components such as drivers, modules, and ballasts. And perhaps many of you already recognize Bodine. It includes innovative and well-tested emergency lighting components that play a key role in egress and safety in case of emergency and the building occupant need light to stay on in order to exit the building. And of course, the Philip is another product brand that includes not only light bulbs, but also lighting sensors that are suitable for the indoor and the industrial connected lighting application. There are also LED retrofit kits under the Philip brand, such as Philip Evo kit, when you need to replace the conventional light fixture cost effectively. And lastly, the newest addition to signify is Interact, which is an IoT Internet of Things platform that comprises of a broad portfolio of tailor-made software applications specifically designed for the connected lighting system. At this point, I would like to take a pause to do a poll question. I would like to hear from you which of those four brands that I mentioned are you most familiar with? So Anne, if you can run this poll question number two. Certainly, thanks Robert. So as you see there on your screen, uh, which of the following brands and product offerings from Signify are familiar to you? Please select all that apply. You wanna see what the um, exposure to these brands have been for you. Select one or more of the following. It's Advance, Bodine, Interact, and Philips. And then we, as before, we'll show the results on the screen. So thank you. And Anne, if you don't mind, if you can just call out the percentage number so that way I can record that as well. Surely. We will have those up in a few moments. We're just waiting for everyone to be able to get their votes in. And there we go. Okay, so Philips, 92% uh, are, are familiar. 42% are familiar with Advance, followed by uh, Bodine with 21%, and Interact 3%. So there you go. Thank you very much. Back to you, Robert. That's not surprising, but at the same time, this certainly means that we have to do a lot of work, at least for me and my colleague who are supporting the component part of the business. But thank you very much for sharing that insight. So let's move on. I want to start talking about Advance. And this is a very important category that I support along with my colleague in Rosemount, which is right outside of O'Hare Airport. The advanced Zitanium LE drivers from Signify is a key part of a connected lighting for many OEM customers because that covered both product categories, what I consider as good or better and the best. At the top of the Zitanium SR LED drivers, the acronym SR stands for Sensor Ready, which is the open digital interface that is key to two-way data exchange I talked about. These Zitanium SR LED drivers, also known by some as the digital LED drivers, cover a wide variety of indoor, industrial, and outdoor connected lighting application. And these LED drivers have built-in memory that were when paired with the compatible network lighting solution from Signify or third party support energy monitoring, remote diagnostics, and even circadian lighting. And the Zitanium LED drivers with auxiliary power are the alternatives if there's no strong need for key information such as performance and diagnostic data from the LED driver within each luminaire. And either way, both classes of LED drivers enjoy wide adoption by numerous lighting manufacturers, not only in the US, but also around the world. Next, Signify offers several variations of Philip EasySense lighting sensors and controllers. They are quite popular with the lighting manufacturer because they provide a very cost-effective fixture-based connected lighting solution that combines occupancy, daylight detection, and other advanced functionality such as wireless control and fixture group capability, or fixture grouping capabilities in a compact form factor. And many of these Philip EasySense products are qualified for additional utility rebates because they are on DLC's qualified product list. And for the Philip EasySense portfolio, there are three tiers. At the bottom, you have the Philip EasySense SNS-010C, which is the entry solution that will be available later this year. 
and the Philip EasySense SNS 200, 210, and SNH 200 are the part of the mid tier for the indoor and industrial applications. And to round out the portfolio, we have the Philip EasySense SNS 300, which sits at the top. And then this is a situation where you need to control multiple light fixtures across several rooms, floors, buildings, or even campuses. Now, when it comes to connected lighting, I will be the first to admit that one size doesn't fit all because each project has unique sets of requirements. So what if you only the most basic lighting control with automated motion detection and daylight harvesting capabilities? So in this example one, you can see you can pair the Philip EasySense SNS 010C with the advanced titanium LED driver with the auxiliary power supply. With this combination, you have a simple yet cost-effective solution that can automatically dim up and down the lights or automatically turn them off or on. And the built-in dip switches inside the Philip EasySense give you some lighting control while allowing you to turn a group of light fixture on and off manually using the wall switch. So this is what I would consider the entry level solution that provide basic energy savings. And if you step up to the next example, number two, you get a wealth of advanced lighting control functionality with either the Philip EasySense SNS 200 or SNS 210, will be, which will be available toward the end of July. And both of them will work with the interior version of the advanced titanium SR LED drivers. And what they bring are more advanced functionality such as prefixture based wireless control using a proven wireless protocol Zigbee. You can save a lot of money because you eliminate the wiring costs for a connected lighting system, which oftentimes is a separate line item that is overlooked when you only consider the hardware cost of the lighting fixture in the control system. And you can also group multiple light fixture and control all of them with a single wireless switch that is compatible with the Philip EasySense. And that does not require a battery too, by the way. You can have all of these features and benefits without a costly gateway. So that's another point of energy, uh, a point of cost saving. And this combination is also eligible for additional utility rebates because it is on the DLC's qualified product list. And later in the second half of this year, the Philip EasySense, like I said, will be commercially available. And one special feature I want to mention is the fact that it will provide circadian lighting control wirelessly. Now for many of you, if you want to try the true, a tried and true zero to 10 dimming for your connected lighting system, and you don't need the diagnostic data that a digital LED driver can provide which I will urge you to reconsider because of the hyper-connected world we live in, where data is becoming more important and essential, you can certainly go with a connected lighting system shown here. And in this example, the DC voltage serves as the control signal and the light fixture will be at the maximum output level when the control voltage is at 10 volts, for example. And conversely, the light level will be at the lowest dimming level or even off when it was set to zero volt. So with this setup, the advanced titanium LED drivers with auxiliary power, output power, can be paired with several lighting control systems that utilize zero to 10 sensor and controllers. So you will get more energy savings plus expanded lighting control options, not to mention all of the features that are offered by the lighting control vendors. And many of these solutions are probably DLC qualified and can be easily integrated with building management system or building automation system, thereby helping you to maximize the energy saving and still take advantage of the utility rebates from DLCs uh, offered by the, that are qualified because they are on the DLC qualified product list. So moving to the example number four, and we now have the so-called all digital connected lighting system. Uh, for which I have been a strong proponent from day one. It checks all the boxes in terms of what a modern connected lighting system can and should do, not just for use cases that have covered for so far, but for those that are yet to come in the not too near distant future. And as a suggestion, I encourage you, all of you to read a blog I wrote that was published by Signify in February of this year. 
That blog was also featured in the March edition of the Let's Magazine, which is a trade publication for the lighting industry. In that blog, I predicted what the light industry might look like a decade from now. And in that future, I envisioned that digital OE drivers such as Zitanium SR LED driver from Signify will be the digital foundation for an all digital connected lighting system. And this system will support two-way data exchange that you see here and will work in constant with other game-changing technology such as augmented reality and machine learning. Together with the compatible network lighting control system, they will not only change the way we think about lighting, but also deliver extraordinary value beyond illumination in exciting ways we have yet to imagine. And here's another example of an all digital connected lighting system from Signify. And we now have a human centric tunable white connected lighting system that has won a coveted award from the publisher of the Let's Magazine this year. With the FlexTune system from Signify, you will have an unparalleled level of flexibility, control precision, and cost effectiveness that will make human-centric lighting mainstream for places such as commercial offices, healthcare facilities, and classrooms. And this may be especially appealing for some of the business or as well as the public and private sectors as they're trying to bring back their customer or workers after they lose them to the pandemic because they have to work from home. And moving on to the next example, I want to mention the Philip Evo kit from Signify. And this happened to be the question that was raised by one of the audience. So for places where you need a cost effective solution to upgrade fluorescent troughers to energy efficient LED fixture, for example, you need to check out Philip's Evo kit. Uh, each of Philip Evo kits provides energy efficiency up to 149 lumens per watt, for example, and comes in different sizes to replace most 2x2, 2x4, and 1x4 fluorescent troughers with a sleek and modern look. And the Philip Evo kit can be ordered with advanced Zitanium LED drivers and lighting controls options from simple to sophisticated one. So the bottom line is that with Philip Evo Kit, you get quality without compromise. And up to now, I have talked about components, sensors, and fixtures. And this slide summarizes how the story comes together with the Interact, which, as you recall, is an IoT platform from Signify. The Interact platform optimizes the experience for various consumer, a customer segment by delivering a specific value proposition for each of them. So for example, if you are driving a smart building initiative, the Interact office will not only help you achieve your sustainability goals through energy savings, the control dashboard could also fulfill other IoT applications such as space management or indoor navigation. And furthermore, the Interact platform signifies supports open APIs to enable integration and extraction of actionable data with other third-party software. So this certainly makes it easier for you to manage your lighting infrastructure in the building through various service-based business models. And lastly, when it comes to connect the lighting, we cannot leave out emergency lighting because of its critical role. And very soon, it will be part of the connected lighting system because of the need for automated manual testing and reporting, the desire for reduced labor, advanced scheduling, and the integration with other smart building technologies. So as we hit the home stretch, I'd like to ask you the final pull question so that I can learn from you how important it is to integrate emergency lighting into the connected lighting system. So, Anne, if you can show the final pull question for this webinar, please. Yes, thank you. And there it is. So, uh, please take a moment to answer our, our last poll question. Uh, as, and it's, how important is it to integrate emergency lighting into the connected lighting system? Is it very important? Are you neutral on that? Not very important, not important, or are you not sure when it comes to your facilities? So, if you can please take a moment to let us know how important it is to integrate emergency lighting into a connected lighting system. We'd appreciate that and then we will show the results as we've done before. Thank you. Great. 
and while you guys are filling out the survey, I just want to let you know that we at Signify are, of course, looking at incorporating Bodine into the Connect Lighting system. There's really a lot of discussion, and um, so definitely something you should be looking forward to in the not-so-distant future, where you can have a connected emergency lighting system as part of overall smart building. Okay, and there are our results. Uh, it's very important for 70% of the audience. Um, neutral, 16%, not important, six, not sure, 9%. So vast majority, very important. Thank you, everyone, and back to you, Robert. Thank you, and I think that is certainly understandable, especially all of us are relying on data to help us to make better decisions. So thank you for all for staying for this long for this webinar as we hit the home stretch. Before I conclude, and for those of you who are patient enough to stay for as long as, long as you have, I'd like to share a bonus material. And what you see here is not about connecting lighting, rather is one of the important product innovation from Signify this year that will contribute to the concept of circular economy in a way that will argue is similar to the positive impact that connected lighting will have on our environment. And this product is Fordable Instant Fit, which is a field replacement LED module that eliminates the need to junk a LED fixture if this LED module or the light engine fails, which for the most part is the case today because they are not field replaceable. Now, on the other hand, with a Fordimo Instant Fit, field replacement of the LED module will be just a simple snap. And of course, no pun intended. So to conclude, I know that I went through a lot of material and these are the four key takeaways I would like you to remember from today's webinar. First of all, all of us are affected by the pandemic in more ways than one. And once we get through this pandemic, which I'm sure we will eventually because of our resiliency and also our ability to help each other, the connected lighting will be thrusted into the center stage under the spotlight and will become part of the new norm because of all the benefits I have talked about and some of the new innovative use cases that we have yet discovered. Second, all the new regulations, industry standards, technologies, coupled with growing utility rebates make connected lighting more attractive than ever. And this is especially true if you think long-term and avoid the mistake of penny-wise today and pound foolishly in the future. Third, because Signify is the leader in terms of geographical coverage, technology leadership, large global customer base, and a growing ecosystem of partners who offer connected lighting solutions, you can count on Signify to provide whatever you need for your next connected lighting project, whether that is new install or retrofit. And then finally, Advanced, Bodine, Philips, and Interact are the right product and the IoT solution for a modern connected lighting system that will serve you and your customer for many years to come. So with that, I want to leave with this slides with all the resources about the product that I've talked about or you can ask your lighting representative or agent about any of the connected lighting product and solution I have discussed today. So with that said, I wanna thank each and every one of you for your time and attention, and I wanna wish everyone to stay safe and healthy. I will now take questions with the little time that we have left, and if your question is not picked or addressed by me, I will personally answer each and every one of them with an email after this webinar. So Anne? Thank you. Thank you, Robert, and uh, thank you for noting that about the questions. We do want to be respectful of everyone's time, and thank you for the presentation. So we will uh, we'll ask we'll hit on a few of the points that have been covered uh, by multiple attendees. I guess I should say I'll, I'll condense them in a way. Um, so one was about the circadian lighting topic, actually, and so to bring those questions together, we did get several on those, and uh, I'll, I'll condense it this way. If we wanted to provide circadian lighting in our facilities, uh, what features do I look for in lighting products? So uh, if you could kind of walk through some of the features that a, a facilities person may want to make sure they're evaluating, make sure they're, they're getting in a system, um, you know, thinking about temperature control and, and uh, 
sensors for you know adjusting to daylight, that kind of thing. If you can just kind of give a quick walkthrough, okay, with that interest uh, in mind. I will be more than happy. Now, I want to answer that question from my perspective because there are people out there who do lighting design for a living. So I will say I'm certainly not qualified to give the most authoritative answer. But from a connected lighting standpoint, when I think about circadian lighting, the first thing I want to note is how easily it can be integrated into the existing lighting system or existing building. Because when you consider a lot of the commercial solution today, they were they are what I would consider to be the wire base. So um, that makes it kind of difficult because you think about it, you have to have two separate control for the most part uh, to control the light intensity as well as color temperature. So there's an inherent cost penalty by using a wire based control. And of course, there might be solution out there that would be suitable if you consider a new install, for example. So that is, I would say, is a small minority. For the large majority of the hospital, classrooms, and commercial buildings, I think that wireless control is the way to go. And uh, advanced uh, flex tune system from Signify that I mentioned earlier is one of the standout solution. And the fact that it was recognized by the industry peer for the innovation that Signify offer in this solution speak volume. And then with this flexing system, for example, uh, you have the wireless control from multiple uh, network lighting control solution that I know personally are listed on the DLC qualified product list. So you get wireless control, which is easier to install, more cost effective, and also you can give that sort of a control that I alluded earlier with this example from the teacher in San Diego. And then with the flexibility in terms of pairing the so-called digital OLED drivers or the FlexTune SR LED drivers with different modules or the control lighting systems, you really have a level of flexibility that you don't have before. So that's just in terms of control. There are other met, uh, metric in terms of, of course, the, the well standards that I talked about earlier, and that's something I will obviously turn to the subject matter expert in terms of color output and things like that. So hopefully I answered that question. Thank you, thank you. So we'll switch gears and you did mention in that answer that you had just given about um, integration into uh, lighting other systems, uh, lighting control systems. Uh, I think that's what you had mentioned. So I wanted to switch gears. We had a question here. Um, when you're talking connected systems, which we've been obviously talking about the past hour, um, the asker asks, will there be more of an emphasis moving forward on integrating lighting into building automation systems? Um, so beyond, I know you had a slide there that was the lighting components, then the lighting control systems, connectivity, and then it, at the right, you had building uh, automation system at the right-hand side of a the slide there. So are you seeing more of an emphasis on that moving forward where we have connected lighting and then it's going even further into the to talk or interact with the other systems to provide value? Yeah, so I think this is something I, if I go back to that previous slide from the HID survey, uh, if you recall, because smart building, I really do think that we are in a world of smartness around us because of the Internet of Things, right? So I think that I'm sure that a lot of building managers are trying to figure out how I can maximize the every square footage, how I can reduce the operating costs and things of that nature. So there's bound to be a scenario where they will come to a point where they need to tie in all the different systems together, one for HVAC, one for alarm, uh, lighting, you name it. So that is, in my view, personal view, is inevitable. So having a connected lighting system that can provide all that wealth of data will really, really help to make that information become more useful. So for example, you may have a situation where you need to turn down the light because the sun is is in the uh, you know sun is beating down on you because it's an open floor space. Uh, so you want to be able to dim the light at the same time low uh, uh, lower the, the temperature in the building. So you have to have some sort of way to orchestrate that sort of uh, control. So to answer your question more succinctly, I think that the building management system or building automation will become a key role going forward and the connected lighting system will be part of the sort of a puzzle that how to make everything work together. 
Well, thank Hopefully you. Thank you, Robert. Thank you very much. And uh, it does look like we're out of time. So I, I did want to thank you, Robert, for your presentation and to Signify for sponsoring the webinar. So thanks again, Robert. As you had mentioned, uh, you will be able to um, connect with uh, questions that had not been answered directly. So that'll that'll be great. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Be safe and talk to you later. Bye-bye. Okay. And to let you know, a recording of this webinar will be available online at facilityexecutive.com. Uh, also, please look out for the email that would have your continuing education credits. And um, we thank you for your attendance. On the way out, there is, I believe, an exit survey, so please take time to uh, vote in that as well to let us know your thoughts on today's presentation. Thanks, everyone, and have a great afternoon. Bye now.